What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another follow-up video and what is this? We got two uploads in a row. I know it's crazy, never before seen, but today I'm bringing you episode 35 of our top 5 mod series. Now, I actually do have a new series coming Friday, so you can be excited for that. I think you guys are going to enjoy it, but if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you guys like and subscribe and let's get right into the video. I with my true fist of iron, but I'm going nowhere. Alright, so the first mod we're going to be taking a look at is the Weather Redux Night Vision Pack mod for the PS4, and this isn't going to be necessarily affecting the weather patterns in the game, as the title may suggest. Um, however, it's going to be adding in new light amplification equipment to the game to help you navigate darker nights when you have a Weather Redux mod on. But if you want to get the just standard night vision goggles, just go ahead and make a chemistry station and go to the utility version, and you will scroll down and see the night vision goggles to be created with adhesive, fiber optics, gold, nuclear material, and plastic um, and once you have crafted these you can actually go down to the tactical night goggles I feel like it's worth mentioning you don't have to have plastic you could actually go ahead and find some welding goggles and you can actually replace those for the plastic and go ahead and just make some night vision goggles that way too but in the gameplay I show right here they don't really work that well when you use them when it's daytime out it just looks kind of goofy but I can see when you are using these with a darker mod that makes it kind of hard to see outside these are actually really really useful so you don't have to use your pit boy all the time and they just have that really tactical feeling whenever you have them on. Now, let's say you don't actually have the materials to build these. There is one basic player located in the Root Cellar and Sanctuary. Um, just for now, though, he says this will be removed in future versions for some reason. He also added a new equipment that can be purchased from Carla, Cleo, or Arturo. And occasionally, Warren and Dropped Raiders will actually drop these. He also added in a new mining helmet headlamp for the power armor, which can be crafted at any um, workstation for power armor. And since external archives are not allowed for the PS4, this is just a duplicated and modified version for the welding goggles. But for now, this is pretty much as good as it gets. But the few upsides of this mod is that it's going to be pretty much compatible with every mod in your load order as far as I've noticed. I actually have a lot of mods on right now, and everything seems to be working fine. Maybe some light enhancement mods won't work as well with it, but for the most part, you're going to be solid on that. And another good thing is that it's not going to be requiring any DLC, so anybody can have this if they want to. It's pretty helpful if you have on like a Darker Nights mod, but for the most part in the vanilla version of the game, you don't really need it that much. Maybe in some darker buildings, but it's a really cool aesthetic you can actually put on your player, and it's one of the better night vision mods I've seen. The next mod we have is Shrezzy's Fenway Apartment for the PS4, and this is obviously by Shrezzy, and this is just another player home mod, and I figured I'd like to add in at least one of these every video, and this one's going to be located just outside of Diamond City. It's really, really easy to find. I'm pretty sure it gives you the map marker right off the bat, so you don't really have to look around too much, but I'm showing you right here just in case. But if you just look at the little main gate here to Diamond City and go to your right and walk down this little alley, there's going to be a little blue door and just go through it, and there's the Fenway Apartments. But the description of this mod says, Tired of building a house from the ground up? Always find yourself building the same house over and over again? We'll go ahead and check out Frenzy's Apartment adds in a fully complete and decorated three-level true split-level loft-style apartment with exposed brick walls, exposed ducking and loads of character throughout. Some features of this place include a kitchen with full labeled storage for all food items, kitchen utensils, and a usable sink and cooking workstation. There's also going to be a lounge and this has a magazine rack and a liquor cabinet. There is going to be a bedroom where there is a terminal here with a lengthy backstory to the apartment and the bed will give you a well-rested bonus. In the bathroom, there's going to be some labeled storage in there as well. In the closet, there is a full labeled clothing storage with two safes for your valuables. In the attic, there is going to be full labeled storage for weapons, ammo, chems, armor, etc. And all workbenches are in there too as well. And those are a lot of the reasons I really like this mod. Like, there is just so many different ways of storing your items. You can sort every single piece of clothing in their closet by what type it is. And everything is just going to be so neat and tidy in this settlement. Because I know when I normally use normal settlements, everything just gets all lost around the settlement in different containers. And I kind of lose where things are. But as you will be able to see whenever I go up to the attic, there is just a um, certain type of container for every different single, like, item and ammo and everything. So it's just really, really easy to keep track of things. And they look really good too. I feel like it's also worth mentioning that every item in this player home is going to be static so you don't have to worry about knocking anything over. Also, if you have the time, you can actually go ahead and read the terminal, which is has a really long backstory to it, which is kind of interesting. I didn't show it in the video, but it's there if you ever get curious. 
Now, the only downside to this mod is that it's going to be requiring pretty much every single DLC, which I know kind of sucks, but if you have the Season Pass or Game of the Year Edition, this is a cool mod to add in. I know a lot of people don't have every single DLC, so I'm, you know, I'm just kind of throwing this out there in case anybody wants to download it because, you know, it's going to be pretty much compatible with every other mod you're using because it's a player home. But overall, it's a pretty decent mod, and it's actually a really, really packed full um, of just a ton of different things. It's a really, really creative settlement idea. The next mod I'm showcasing is the Modern Minutemen Military Mod, official beta by RSH7444, and this is going to be a more of a modernization Minutemen mod, which is going to be kind of staying away from the, like, Revolutionary War era Minutemen and turning them more into a current, like, Vietnam and more of, like, just an army version of the Minutemen. This mod recharacterizes and recloves and renames all of the Minutemen, including like all the main characters like Preston Garvey and all like that. And on screen right now is all the leveling that comes with this. So as you level up in the game, the Minutemen are going to be leveling up as well. So until level 20, all Minutemen are going to be recruits. And as you level up all the way up to level 80, that's when they start turning into command sergeants and lieutenants. And after re level 80, I guess it just levels with you. Also, if you want to, you could also turn companions like McCready and Kate, even Paladin Dan's, into modern Minutemen just by changing their outfit selection, and all companions would be rank major, but I believe they level up with you as you level up. But this is just a nice little cool mod that kind of gets rid of the old and repetitive Minutemen and turns them into a more proper military because it does look like the Brotherhood of Seal actually looks like a really powerful force, and the Minutemen kind of just like look like revolutionary soldiers, so if you kind of want a more of a modern military look, this is a good mod for you. This mod does not require any DLC, so you don't have to worry about anything like that, and also, it's going to be pretty much compatible with every other mod, as long as it's not related to Minutemen and messing with their leveling system and just the way they operate in general. But I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, and overall, it's a pretty decent mod. Moving on, we have the Military Clutter mod for the PS4, and this is going to be essentially adding in various crates for mines, grenades, missiles, sniper rifles, fat men, fusion cores, and other cells along with much more to give your military base that more of a loaded to bear look. And these new items can be located in your workshop by going to the furniture tab and then scrolling over to the miscellaneous section. This is where you're going to be able to find all the different items. And he actually updated it and now there is more clutter, stack shelves, mines, mini nukes, and more wall and floor weapon cabinets. But I actually like how he added in a ton of new items just for storage, and I found that using these ammo shelves right here look really good behind vendors or weapon vendors, you know, to actually give them more of a, like, they actually have stock and things they need to actually refill and all that stuff. It just makes your base look a lot more full, and if you just need something to go into a wall, it doesn't necessarily need to be useful for anything, just to go there so it doesn't look so plain. These are great things to do. Right here is some actual items you can put on desks, which actually make the game look really, really good as well. It just adds in a ton of things. It almost reminds me of the um, OC Decorator mod, which just lets you add in a ton of different items, and it just makes your base look so much better. I feel like it's also worth mentioning that these items are very, very cheap to build in the workshop. Most of them only require very few steel, so it's not going to be requiring a ton of materials. You know, if you have, like, the mini nukes aren't going to be requiring tons and tons of nuclear material and things like that, so it's going to be really, really effective on material. Now, if you actually want to make the weapon cabinets functional, you have to place a weapon display board on the wall behind it and then place the weapons cabinet over it and then position your gun where you want it to be. This is just a way because, you know, once again, Fallout 4 does not allow script to be edited, so you actually have to use, like, little glitches to get around that, but they still look really good. If you don't have the DLC to actually enable weapons display things, I don't know, we really know what to tell you, but they still look kind of good, and then maybe somehow you could try to fix a weapon to go in there somehow. I don't really know, but they still look good, I guess. But this mod is not going to be requiring any DLC or anything like that, and it's a really, really simple and easy mod to actually have in your game. You'll probably see it in a lot of base building videos in the future, for me just because I like how it adds in all the different type of items you can use and it's just a really really good um, base building tool and I look forward to using it in the future. Our final mod we have is the Age of Airships mod for the PS4 and this is by Galley Row and this is one of the more creative and actually cool mods I've seen in this game and this is going to be basically adding in eight rigid airships floating around your uh, Fallout 4 world 
which half of them being reconstructions of historical airships and three of them can be used as a functional player home. You can also explore the famous Hindenburg and see how the world's largest airship looked on the inside and you can use these to travel instantly using their network of doorways. Now there are a variety of ways of actually accessing these airships but the one I use all the time is just the one that are located on your Pip-Boy map and there is one located just outside of Sanctuary and you can just press on the little airship and it'll take you straight up to the actual big ones. Now the gameplay that you're seeing right now is actually the underside of one of the airships and this is going to be one of the player homes where we can actually go in and use a workshop to edit it, most of the things but under here there's actually a ton of detail it's like even more detailed than the Pred one at some points and you can tell this mod creator actually did a lot of effort on this mod and it looks really really good but we're gonna go ahead and show the upper portion because some of the interiors on some of these airships are just insane and they look very very good so right here is one of the interiors of one of the airships. For the sake of the video's time, I'm only going to be showing one. But as you can see right here, this is just an insanely detailed um, area right here. And each of these little displays has a little option you can click on. That one says Nuka World, the island. So if you click on any of these, they're going to take you to a location in the map. So this island one is going to be Far Harbor. Each one of these little... Uh, Brotherhood of Steel little airship thing is going to take you to each and different um, settlement in the game if you find that very helpful. Um, I feel like it's a really, really fast way to travel around the map, and I think it's just really, really convenient that they're all in one spot. Um, but they still just look really, really cool. If you go past these stairs and then go into this room and take a left, right here is going to be all the different bedrooms for the passengers. You yourself can't really interact with these all that much, but each and every room has its own different little layout, and some of them are nicer than others. So I think it's pretty cool. If you go through this door behind the staircase, there's also going to be a little green room and restaurant little area, and I think this place looks really, really nice. Looks really creative. All the plants make it look really full, and then here's some actual beverages and stuff on the counter that just make it look even better. But I think this place looks really really cool and just full of detail and it's actually just kind of amazes me how much is actually like work went into this mod and he's constantly updating it but for this mod it is going to be acquiring two dlcs which is the far harbor dlc and the nuka world dlc so if you have those it's kind of unfortunate but if you don't already you should kind of get them just because they're kind of used for every mod like that's really good and they're just really fun dlcs to have in general but this place is a really really cool mod it's not really going to be affecting anything else in your game overall a really solid and just really detailed mod and i really did enjoy it but that is pretty much all the mods I have for you today, guys. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, I do have a new series coming on Friday, which I think will be pretty cool. I'm just trying to get some different variety of videos going. If you guys do have any ideas for series that you would like to see or just videos in general, make sure to just put them in the comments. I'm always open up to suggestions because sometimes you guys do actually have some really good ideas. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.